Town Sports. Damon Amendolar is going to join us here, and uh, obviously we're going to ask him about Oakland and Sacramento and Las Vegas and the A's. But I think, Drake, we got to ask him about Aaron Rodgers as well. Yeah, got to start there. <laughs> DA, what's up, man? It's your boy, Drapes. What's going on, man? Drapes, how we doing, man? Man, long time, no time. Me and this guy go way back. Yeah? Before he blew up, before he became big time. Did you make him too? No, no, no he was in Boston, you know, uh-huh. toiling away with me and uh, yeah. happy for all his success. What's up, DA? Drapes, you and I go back before the Celtics were world champions. It was a long, long time long ago. Long time. Way back when, <laughs> back when Brady and Belichick could actually work side by side. We go way, 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 wow. way, way back. Yes, yeah, that's yeah. right. So, yeah, good to talk to you guys. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, Damon, we appreciate your time very much. Before we get to the A's, we were just talking about uh, Aaron Rodgers and Drapes says, and we, for the most part, agree. We got a few people, dissenters on the phone, but where do you think Aaron Rodgers ranks in terms of um, being an underachieving quarterback, all things considered? Well, it kind of depends on the definition of underachieving. He has a Super Bowl championship yeah. and he is going to go to the Hall of Fame. So if you would have pegged him in the 2005 draft, sliding all the way into the 20s, the last guy left in that green room and said, that guy is going to win a Super Bowl multiple MVPs and go to the Hall of Fame, that's a wild success. Wild, yes. unbelievable success. However, mm-hmm. you cannot qualify him as one of the greats of all time. He could be one of the most talented of all time. He certainly could be one of the greatest skilled quarterbacks of all time, but you simply cannot call him one of the greatest of all time because of the lack of ultimate success. There's a lot of NFC Championship game losses on that resume. So, if you're asking me, is he a surefire Hall of Famer? Does that make him great? Absolutely. Is he in the category of Brady, Montana? The answer is no. DA, I'm glad you said that. And that was my point. And I remember it was some time ago, maybe four or five years ago, there was some debate, you know, that Aaron Rodgers might be the greatest quarterback of all time. I got him behind Patrick Mahomes now. I think Patrick Mahomes' career with three Super Bowls has uh, outdid Aaron Rodgers. Where is his rightful place? Is he just on that tier below Brady, Montana, and for me, Mahomes? Yeah, and and this is where I think the GOAT debates or the greatest of all time debates when it comes to the quarterback tiers gets real sideways because – You cannot say, well, it's not a big deal that Rodgers doesn't have more than one Super Bowl, but then also give Tom Brady all the credit for winning seven. It doesn't work that way. So you can't you can't do both. And and to me, it's not all or nothing. I don't think just because of that singular tally, it means you're the greatest of all time. But I do think when it comes to the greatest, you have to start weighing that thing. And look, if you're Aaron Rodgers obviously you're incredibly successful, but yeah, it's a second tier below those guys. I agree with your, your assessment of Patrick Mahomes because the right now, if he retired today, Mahomes is going to be at the same exact spot in history as, as Aaron Rodgers, getting into the hall of fame on a first ballot, but he's got three more rings and half the amount of time. So you have to be able to weigh all things considered. And I think that Rodgers is that, that, that next tier that has the John Elways, the Dan Marinos, the Drew Breeses. Um, those Where's Peyton types- Manning at, DA? Mm. And Peyton Manning, yeah. I mean, so is Peyton Manning ever going to be the greatest of all time? He is not simply because of lack of Super Bowls. But is he going to be at the back end of the top tier? Yeah, and, and I think it's maybe more accurate to think of it as the NFL 100 did. They did that, that incredible piece, um, what, four years ago now, where they they had this is the top 100 years or the top players of the 100 years that group of guys does Rodgers get in there yeah and Peyton Manning gets in there and so that to me was kind of a, a more accurate assessment of the true legends once you get into the top four five six guys of all time now you're really parsing and that's where you have to start counting rings but yeah I think that pool of the top seven guys or so Obviously, Peyton Manning is in there, and Rodgers is floating around the outside of that top mm-hmm. five or six to me. Mm-hmm. Thank you, uh, Damon. We appreciate that. Damon, Amanda Lara with us from Mad Dog Sports Radio. And we primarily wanted to talk to, of course, 
uh, because you've been all over this A's story, and now we're involved in that because the A's are going to uh, be pitching their tent here for the next three or four years. Where do you think, what's your best guess of where the A's eventually settle for good, Damon? I, I don't think there's an answer yet to that, and I know that sounds like a cop-out, but here's the reasons why. How much time do you have? I mean, singularly, <laughs> Major League Baseball has already kind of shoved the A's towards Vegas. Willingly or unwillingly, they've shoved them in there. Now, if the, if this doesn't work, it's a massive embarrassment for Major League Baseball and Rob Manfred. So I think ultimately they want to get them there no matter what it takes. But is it logical to see the end of the of the road, the A's in Vegas? No, it's illogical. And I'm sure you guys have parsed this and broken this down a million times. But the fact of the matter is John Fisher is the single worst owner in professional sports mm -hmm. or North American sports leagues. That's, to me, inarguable. He has been the biggest cheapskate in baseball. He has failed to build a winner, and when they had a winner, by happenstance, he failed to keep it together. He has watched his entire ballpark erode without doing absolutely anything and has stiff-armed the fans. You might look mm -hmm. at Tampa Bay and say, well, there's a lot of similarities. But the Rays have gone to World Series, and they have tried to put a coat of paint or two on the trop, and they are working their butts off to create a new ballpark in Tampa Bay, and they have said, we want people to come, whatever it takes. It hasn't always worked. The A's have done the opposite. They, right. they've, they've given the Heisman to their fans and asked them to be apathetic. They've been at war with the most diehard of their fans. So at that point in time, you have to ask yourself, well, is there ever a road back to Oakland because of that? I think the only road back to Oakland is if John Fisher sells. Mm -hmm. And at this point, he seems to be refusing to do so. But if, if, if this whole thing crumbles in Vegas and he does sell, then the odds are it's either Sacramento or Oakland. That's mm -hmm. it. I, I don't think if he sells, it's still going to Las Vegas. Because there's going to be such an appetite in Vegas for an expansion team. See, right. the brand of the A's has been burned to a crisp. So mm. you're not getting any of that bumper juice from a new city. I think there's a lot of skepticism building in Las Vegas about John Fisher, and rightfully so. So there, there's no bounce you get there. Mm -hmm. I think the smart play for baseball is to force John Fisher to sell to some owner in the Bay Area. And maybe it's Vivek and it stays in Sacramento, but it is the A's remain in California. And then one of the two upcoming expansion teams go to Las Vegas. And so under that, then the A's don't get to Las Vegas and they stay. So where does this end? I think it's impossible to say because this week we had the financing plan last week. And I mean, the whole financing plan was one big <laughs> shell game of believe us. Well, believe you what? It was just make believe. It was 100% make believe. Don't worry, we have the money. You do? Well, you have no team. You never spent it. Don't worry, we have the lenders. You do name them. Well, we don't have the names right now. I mean, it was it was Mr. Rogers' puppet yes. theater of make believe. It uh -huh. was unbelievable. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Damon Amendolara, Mad Dog Sports host, Mad Dog Radio. Da, uh, one of the things that we're struggling with here in Sacramento is to your point about John Fisher trying to reconcile having a team here in Sacramento but also having him being the owner of the Oakland A's. A lot of people excited to get baseball here in the city of Sacramento. I'm not asking you to tell us how we should feel, but how would you feel? And 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 would you embrace a team like this coming to your town if this is a, a, something that you haven't had before? I would have a really tough time embracing this because I think I am in the weeds of how awful Fisher and his cronies have been. They have been duplicitous. They have been underhanded. They have been discombobulated. They have been all the things you hate to see in ownership. And I look, I understand a city such as yourself saying another pro sports team. That would be amazing. But it's at what cost? You know, I'm watching what they're doing in, in Oakland and saying, could you trust them in the next spot? Look, if you told me the A's are selling to Vivek and they're staying in Sacramento, I'll be like, hey, throw a party. You guys got to. You guys got an owner that cares. He has local ties. He can build from what he knows of a better organization than they have, and he wants to win. Nope. Look, I, I got no question about that. But I can tell you all evidence points to John Fisher being 
an incompetent disaster and a bad faith actor. It's not just the type of guy that is like, oh, he just kind of can't get his you know what together. It's that he is using these levers to manipulate a lie. And the lie is that nobody in Oakland cares. And I can tell you, Drape, and you and I go back long enough so that you you know my history. I've been doing this for 20 some odd years, and I've done it at a national level. 12 or 13. So I have covered a lot of teams that have relocated. And when teams relocate, there is a, there is a big time apathy and a sunken uh, passion from a city that is losing their team. And they kind of get the shrug of the shoulders. You know what? Kick rocks, dude. And there is a fight in Oakland to keep this team, a fight that I've never seen before. They are passionate. They are ferocious. They are saying, this is a con and you guys don't see it. And so it's a different vibe. And so how does that happen? It happens when an owner tries to sell an improper narrative, which is nobody in Oakland cares, so we have to move. No, they, they care. You've tried to keep them away. You've tried to kill their interest. And you have at the last second, multiple times at the 11th hour, pulled out of a new ballpark in Oakland. So I don't trust him. You shouldn't trust him. Is pro baseball cool? Of course it is. Is getting, you know, big-time players there cool? Of course it is. Do I think that anything changes for the A's if John Fisher remains owner, if they go to Sacramento, or when they go to Vegas? The answer is no, because it could have changed already. You know, the 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 the, the, the cow is out of the barn. The horse is out of the barn now for the A's in Oakland. Are they spending any money on this roster? Do they look like they're investing in the product? Do, are they investing in anything besides holding revenue sharing in their own pocket. I mean, the, the whole thing is, it's so grimy that if I was a Sacramento sports fan, I'd have a really tough time balancing. Yeah, I love a professional team coming, but I got to root for that guy and hope that guy suddenly becomes a completely different guy. I just don't believe that ever happens. Damon Amendolara with us. And Damon, I think one of the most stunning aspects of this whole story is the way the cell movement has been picked up in other cities by fans of of other teams so my question is the longer this drags on how much damage does mlb risk doing to its uh image and its product a pretty massive one kev a pretty massive one because rob manfred's already not the most popular commissioner we know this <clears throat> but every day this extends without clarity at the end is another day of a black eye for baseball because what you've heard now is the drumbeat from guys like Jeff Pass and Ken Rosenthal, real baseball insiders that say, hey, this is unpopular within the league. There are owners that have said, why are we even doing this? Mm. No offense to you guys, but you're playing in a minor league baseball ballpark, not for one year, not for two years, but three or more. So every day you do that is another message that this is amateur hour for the A's. This is not major league baseball yet. And I know you guys will do as well as you can with that. But you know the narrative. It's, oh, the A's are playing in a triple-A ballpark. You're playing outdoors at 110 degrees. No, most will be night games. And that's good, but not all. And so inevitably, the five, six, ten times each season over the next three that it's 108, that's a story. And Major League Baseball players aren't going to be thrilled with that. And they're not going to be thrilled with going to a clubhouse that's not built within the stadium for their that suits their needs. And so everything about this is a slow, torturous bleed. If you told me, <laughs> hey, the A's next year are in Vegas, there's nothing you can do about it, all right, then you rip the Band-Aid off quickly. But this is mm. the longest the longest Band-Aid rip you'll ever have. But we're going on 20 <laughs> years of a Band-Aid rip. Yeah. How long? <laughs> it's like one centimeter right. <laughs> every year that we rip off the Band-Aid. It's <laughs> absurd. Hey, DA, you know... I understand what you're saying about John Fisher and he deserves, you know, all the vitriol put at his way. How much should Manfred get though? Because why this team in Vegas, why not expansion? It, you know, does John Fisher have something on Manfred? I, it just doesn't make sense to me right from the jump. Why this team ripping it from Oakland, going to Vegas and how much blood does Manfred have on his hands with this? A lot. A lot. I, I think uh, a stronger steward of the league sees this for what it is and says, we have to find a different solution here. Mm -hmm. And I think what you do is incentivize John Fisher to sell. More than likely, Fisher just wants to get to Vegas to enhance the value of the franchise and then turn around and sell. They're even going to build in a clause 
to whatever public money is involved in Vegas, that he's got to stick around for five plus years and not just turn around and sell. So they're already worried that that's what he wants to do. So is this best for the game when a guy is just going somewhere just so he can cash out quicker and at a higher rate? The answer is no, because John Fisher cashes out with his money, but 10, 15, 20, 25, 50 years from now, what's the legacy of this move? The damage that's been done to a city in Oakland that is down to its last team and would throw all of its passion behind it. Now, Vegas has the Golden Knights that they love. They have the Raiders that they're slow to come around on. You're asking a a city that has no bond to professional baseball when it comes to the A's to love a team that doesn't spend money, that has a corrupt (laughs) owner, and is the third team in town. What happens if that doesn't work? And you are leaving a market that, by the way, is a much bigger market from a media standpoint, much Mm -hmm. bigger market when it comes to millionaires and billionaires and tech money and sponsorship money that would come out of the Bay Area versus the smallest market by far in Major League Baseball and the television revenue that's attached to that. What does that say 25 years from now? I think it says, what the heck were you doing? And that falls on Rob Manfred, Drapes. That falls on Rob Manfred and... My guess is Manfred doesn't want this to happen, but it's it's such a, a a thing that is burned to the ground in Oakland. There is such bad blood between the A's organization and the city, and the A's have basically refused to really do business there. And I, I think Manfred's like, look, I can't force him to sell because he hasn't done anything like Donald Sterling. He hasn't been a racist. He hasn't done anything against the law like Dan Snyder, so I can't force him to sell. So basically, I lose, and the league loses. And I think that that's what they're doing. They're mitigating the loss here because if you can force Dan Snyder to sell and you can force Donald Sterling to sell, there are levers to pull to make it happen, but it just, he hasn't done anything that bad. And so he's going to be allowed, it seems, to kind of follow this thing through. But I mean, will it even see its way through? He's such a mess. Mm. I, I, I don't know. Damon Amundel, pardon me, Damon Amundel are with us, pardon me. And uh, you may have just partially answered this question, but you touched on um, one of the aspects of this that has just baffled me for, I don't know, four years now, whatever it's been since baseball announced it. Oh, if you go to Vegas, we're going to waive the relocation fee. Why have the other owners been so accommodating? Why have they bent over backwards to allow Fisher to come up with any plan he wants to go to Vegas, even when these plans, as you say, they seem just fantasy why are baseball owners going along with all of this it is the biggest question and you know like i said there's been reports from passing and rosenthal that there are owners that are saying internally this is a mm-hmm. mistake well what yeah. are we doing here yeah so my guess is if there's guys if there's owners that recognize the mistake here and why they're not speaking up and why they are letting this happen is because they can't stand in the way of one of their brethren enriching Mm -hmm. himself because they don't ever want anybody to stand in their way of doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. Now, does it make logical sense for them to not take expansion money to go to Vegas? No, it doesn't. I I don't. Why would you ever waive a relocation fee and punt on an expansion fee that could put tons of money in your pockets to watch this thing happen? I have no idea because Vegas would probably have the first expansion team for Major League Baseball. Right, yeah. So why they they would say no to an extra six hundred million dollars? I, I have no idea. The only answer I can come up with is, you know, you have thirty millionaire slash billionaires, and they go, "I'm not going to be the one that tells that guy no because I don't want anybody yeah. ever to tell me no." Mm. That makes as much sense as anything yeah. else I've yeah. heard. Hey, Da, uh, one last question for you. You know, we here in Sacramento, you know, understand you know, the prospects of losing the team and, and what it could do. But, you know, we had a Hail Mary here in Sacramento and, and kept the Kings. What's the Hail Mary for the city of Oakland? Is there one uh, still? Could they still, you know, uh, have a, uh, you know, late game uh, touchdown here, if you will, uh, walk off home run to and keep Aaron their Rogers, team? Uh, yeah, Aaron Rodgers-esque uh, <laughs> drive down the field or something <laughs> like that. Is, is there a play there the, that Oakland can make? Yeah, it's a Hail Mary. And it's a slim, it's a slim chance, but there is a chance. And that is that Fisher's incompetence and Fisher's inability to get a project seen all the way through is it comes to um, a calamitous end in 
in Vegas, and it just doesn't work there. Because, I mean, let the, the numbers are staggering. It's a $1.5 billion ballpark right now, and he's only getting $350 million publicly from Vegas. Now, that's a lot of money, but he's got to come up with 1.2. Now, I, I, I ask Sacramento sports fans and you both to envision – the A's, this ragtag organization that doesn't paint the seats of the Coliseum, that it continues to just field teams that nobody's ever heard of the guys. I ask you to envision a, a, a place where that group comes up with $1.2 billion mm. by April when there's got to be a shovel in the ground to keep this thing on a timeline. I mean, what are the odds of that? Now, they could keep pushing this out. They can keep playing in Sacramento. And maybe at some point, there's something that comes together. Maybe they sell and a new owner gets it to come together. But you have to count on the competence and um, the, 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 the business acumen of John Fisher. And that's just a losing proposition. You know, now it would, it would have been like betting on South Sudan the other day. They're like, you know, plus 43. Uh, <laughs> you, obviously, you're going to say Team USA ends up figuring this thing out because Major League Baseball wants to go to Vegas. And again, the horse is out of the barn in Oakland. But is there a chance South Sudan can pull it off because LeBron and Team USA just doesn't care and, you know, they just don't play defense and they just didn't wake up that day? Yeah. And the bet here would be that is there a path where Fisher loses the trust of the lawmakers in Vegas, that he doesn't know how to pull it together to get the ballpark financing done, that the lenders go, well, we don't trust you, and there is no equity put up by John Fisher because he's sold cheapskate. All that is definitely plausible. Now, five things have to happen, but could all five happen individually? Sure. And if that's the case, then the A's are stuck in Sacramento, and then there's a decision to make. Do you keep them in Sacramento? Do you move them back to Oakland? Do you have to force John Fisher to sell so he can get it to Vegas? And at that point, again, who knows? But this is... This is the craziest re relocation story, I think, ever. I think it's crazier than Al Davis against the NFL in 82 trying to get to L.A. I think it's crazier than Al Davis going back. I think it's crazier than the Colts leaving Baltimore to go to Indianapolis. It's crazier than anything I've ever seen because this is like a 20-year bleed, and it's like we're all watching this mess unfold, and nobody can stop it. Mm -hmm. And it's just everyone's calling it for what it is, which is this is insanity, and it's just kind of like weirder by the day. And you've been on the story from day one. Damon, thanks for your insight. We appreciate it. Uh, have a great week. We hope to talk to you again soon. Yeah, my pleasure. Anytime, guys. Let me know. Drapes, peace out. All right, DA. Yeah, we have this okay. uh, just to emphasize the point from Vital Vegas. Mm -hmm. At a presentation to the Las Vegas Stadium Authority on July 18th, the A's confirmed there is currently no financing in place for the proposed $1.5 billion ballpark. The A's don't have investors investing. They hope to, but if they had investors, we'd have heard about them. Right. No smart investor is going to contribute $850 million or any portion thereof based upon some magical future projected value of the team. That value is a complete fabrication, just like projections of 28,000 fans attending every game. <laughs> As is, is the assertion, uh, there is a number of interested investors. The A's even hired a high-powered firm to find investors, but none have surfaced. Wow. Not one. It's a joke. I don't know it's what smoke it is. and mirrors. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Magically, you know, 1.2 billion is going to come. Uh, and, and Da, he was spot on with that. So there, there's hope for Sacramento, and there's I hope for Oakland. Think so. Yes. 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 And Vegas is going to end up with a team. One right. Way or the regardless. Other yeah. Yes. Uh, when we come back, uh, the uh, controversy that lit up Twitter over the weekend: Sabonis versus Boogie. <laughs> Did you see this? This is I big time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Who you got next on Sackdown Sports? <laughs>